This is section 1.2 in your book. It's rates of change of functions. I've got a couple examples drawn here. In the white, you see a function that's given numerically, that is, as a table of values. And then below that, in the green, you can see a function represented graphically. And then I'll do a third example with a function that's given analytically. That is, we'll look at a function that is an equation. So looking at our first example, this is a lemonade stand. So imagine that you're going to make a little money in the summer. So you uh, set up your card table with lemonade out at the curb and you're trying to catch people coming by. So at 9 o'clock, uh, you have sold zero lemonades. At 10 o'clock, you've still not sold any. Then by 11 o'clock, we've now sold two lemonades total. <clears throat> at 12 o'clock... Uh, the sales have gone up to five total lemonades. So you can tell that between 11 and 12, uh, we sold three lemonades to go from two to five. So what we are going to talk about is the rate of change. And I'm going to put in parentheses average rate of change. And we will commonly abbreviate this either as an AROC for average rate of change, or just as commonly, probably more commonly, we'll just call it the ROC, the rate of change. So an average rate of change is what we call a pre-calculus topic. The instantaneous rate of change is one of the big ideas in AP calculus. So we'll talk about that at great length uh, next year. So we are going to look for the rate of change in sales of lemonade and then we'll do a few examples and so the first time I'm going to say the sales of lemonade between uh, 11 o'clock and 1 o'clock. So the way we will do this to find our rate of change we are going to take the the number sold, so that that kind of y value, if you want to think of the time as being the x value and the number of lemonades sold as being the y value, we're going to take the number sold at 1 o'clock, that's 13, minus the number sold at 11, that's 2. So we're going to see that means we've sold uh, a total of 11 lemonades in between 11 and 1 o'clock. And then we'll do the change in the times on the bottom. So now here's where our our numbering of times doesn't work real great because this 12 to 1 doesn't isn't really uh, sequential. So we might want to think of the times maybe like with a 24-hour clock. So we might think of 1 o'clock as really being... Um, whatever they call it in the military, 1,300 hours maybe, and 14 and 15 for the times there. So the change in time in the bottom from 11 to 1 is going to be the 13 minus the 11, and that will give us 2. And so if you like, we can say that we sold on average 5.5 lemonades per hour. So I, hopefully that makes sense. You know, in two hours, we sold, you know, on average five and a half the first hour, another five and a half the second hour to get to the 11 hours. Let's talk about units a little bit because uh, that's an important idea as well. So our units are going to be the units of those Y values, the ones on top, which is going to be lemonades. So, and then that's going to be per... And then uh, the time is given in hours, so we sold 5.5 lemonades per hour. Okay, let's do another example. Let's do from 1 to 2, and if you want, you can hit pause on this and work it yourself and check it. I'm going to go right to it. So I'm going to say that at 2 o'clock we've sold 17 lemonades. At 1 o'clock, we had sold 13 lemonades, and I'm going to go 2 minus 1, or I guess we've 
uh, switched our numbering to a 24-hour clock. So 2 o'clock, we'll say, is 14 minus 13. And so that will be 4 over 1. So again, we have 4 lemonades per hour is our average rate of change. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Let's jump to the next uh, example. Here our function is given by this green uh, graph. So this is a graphical representation of a function. Uh, we can see that the height is given on the vertical axis in feet and the time is given in seconds on the horizontal axis. So let's see if we can find here the rate of change between and I'm going to say for the first example, let's say from time 0 to time 2 seconds. And so what we're going to do then is we will say what is the height at time 2 minus the height at time 0 all over 2 minus 0. And so the height at time 2 is 10, and according to the graph, and the height at time 0 is 2, and so we are going to get 8 over 2, or that's going to be 4, and our units here, again, are going to be the, the y units, which is feet, and then per second is the x value there. Now you may recognize this, this average rate of change, as in notationally as being the y values, the change in the y's, over the change in the x's. Hopefully that rings a bell from your Algebra 2 days. So this is exactly the slope of that line between those two points. And that is, in fact, a geometric representation for this average rate of change. So if we look at the slope of the line joining those two points on the curve, that is exactly our average rate of change, which is 4. So let's do another one. Let's do this time from t equals 2 to t equals 6. And again, you can pause it if you like and try it on your own. I'm going to write it notationally as the height at time 6 minus the height at times two, at time 2 over, and then 6 minus 2 are the times. So the height at time 6 is supposed to be 30, and the height at times 2 was 10, and we've got the 6 minus 2 is 4, so that's looking like 20 divided by 4, or 5 again, feet per second is the average rate of change. And again, just to emphasize, that is the slope of that line joining those two points on the curve. Okay, that's what our average rate of change is representing. It's the slope. So let's do one more. Uh, let's do uh, the average rate of change uh, from t equals 6 to t equals 10. So I'm going to go h of 10 minus h of 6 all over 10 minus 6. h of 10 is back to 10. h of 6 is the 30. And then the 10 minus 6 is again 4. So 10 minus 30 is a negative 20. And so that's going to make it be a negative 5 feet per second. So in the context of this problem, the negative means this object is now falling down. So it is, its height is decreasing, that is, it is falling towards the ground, and that would be the slope of that line joining those two points on the curve. Okay, let's do another example. I'm going to get a new screen here, and, on, uh, and we're going to talk about function notation here. So our example here, we did an example where the function was given numerically, the table, and we did one where the function was given graphically, and now this is going to be analytic, so I'm going to tell you the function is f of x equals x squared. 
So remember, our rate of change is, we said, is this, uh, if you want to think of it in terms of a formula, it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's exactly your slope formula from your Algebra 2 days. You may have seen this written as the change in y over the change in x. I don't know if you're familiar with that notation or not, but that little triangle there is a Greek letter delta. In this class, I'm going to try to make you fluent in Greek. And delta in math uh, many times refers to change. So that's the change in y over the change in x. So let's find the rate of change between uh, x equals 1 and x equals 3. So we would, now I'm going to do this notationally, so I'm going to write this as, again, f of 3 minus f of 1 all over 3 minus 1. Now the f of 1 is going to be what we get by plugging in 1 into our function, and our function says to square that, so that means it's going to be 1. The f I got to know the f of 3 also. Oops, I put that in the wrong order. Hold on there. That should be a minus 1 there. f of 3 is 3 squared, which is 9. So that should look like 9 minus 1 on top. And then we got the 3 minus 1 is 2 on the bottom. And 8 divided by 2 is 4. And I didn't really give any units here, so uh, I'm not going to ask you to give me units there. We'll just get the rate of change as that number. Okay, let's do one more. Let's uh, say we're going to find the rate of change between, uh, let's say, t equals uh, 3 and t equals 9. So notationally, we're going to get f of 9 minus f of 3 all over 9 minus 3. f of 9 is going to be 9 squared minus 3 squared, all over 9 minus 3 is 6. That looks like 81 minus 9, if I'm doing that right. 81 uh, minus 9, I believe, is 72. And I think 72 divided by 6 goes in there evenly. is going to be 12. All right. Well, hopefully this will clarify uh, what you need to do for homework number 3.